Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we follow cleanup efforts in Middle Tennessee. Just days after a tornado tore through several communities, leaving at least 25 dead. And here in Kentucky, while we did not deal with the Tuesday tornado, people took time to prepare for one yesterday as part of Severe Weather Awareness Week. And in Rowan County, a new city budget should mean better response times for firefighters in Moorhead. We'll tell you how. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is a minute after six. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Lacey Roberts. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning on this Friday Eve. And Lacey, yesterday was gorgeous. Hoping mm -hmm. for more of it today. Hope so. But then, you know, we've got this possibility of the stuff you like. And you're the only person ever excited. Look, it was like almost 60, if not warmer than 60 yesterday. Even if a little bit of snow fall, it's not going to stick. Look, I, okay, I'm... I'm going to try and be civil about this, <laughs> but I, Brandon, he's, he's already telling you everything about the look, forecast. Look at his going hand ahead. though. Look, ready? Okay, go ahead. People cannot complain about snow this year because we have had that is minus true. one, one. We have not had a snow minus that one is true. that has relatively impacted anything this year. That is okay. true. I'll give you I'll, that. You know, we'll give you that. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you that one. But okay. anyway, there is a chance for it tomorrow, not today. Let's talk about today. We start over in Pikeville this morning with the Pikeville Medical Center camera and overlooking the beautiful city there and things are all quiet this morning. Temperatures a little bit on the cooler side, thirties and forties. As you head out the door this morning, we're seeing 34 in Irvin and 42 there in Harlan. That's your range this morning. Normal day on the coffee meter. So not a whole lot of extra needed because it's getting close of the weekend. We're over the hump now going downhill. Some sunshine possible early this morning as we start out in the 30s and 40s. Cloudy by the afternoon hours into the 60s and then chances for some scattered showers in the overnight hours and we again get back down to right around 37. We'll talk about the extended forecast in a few minutes. Lacey. Thank you, Brandon. It's a state of emergency in Tennessee after the deadliest day of tornadoes in seven years. Yeah, at least two dozen people are dead and entire neighborhoods are leveled. Camilla Bernal is on the ground in one of the hardest hit areas east of Nashville with the latest. There have been there just there have been a lot of people helping out them. A lot of strangers, people I've never met before. Kindness of strangers shining through the darkest of times for the people who have lost everything. Okay, what do you do? You just come in by the coming to help. Yeah. Do you know Alex? No. No, just going where help is needed. After a lethal and powerful tornado struck in the middle of the night, the deadliest day of tornadoes in seven years. We got our daughter out of bed and we went down to the basement and we we made it with like 30 seconds to spare. And, the, and the, it hit like a freight train. Officials are now working to piece together an accurate picture of the deadly trail of devastation left behind. We will have law enforcement and first responders uh, there tonight uh, on the scene uh, working around the clock. It's unclear how many tornadoes swept across the region. An initial survey of the damage indicates at least one tornado in the East Nashville area was a powerful EF3. I don't I don't think we would have. Not all of us would have survived if we had been upstairs still in Putnam County, Tennessee. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. And a startling discovery in one of the hardest hit counties. Officials in Putnam County said skeletal remains were discovered during the search for missing and injured. Yesterday, Putnam County Sheriff Eddie Ferris said that as crews searched the area, they found skeletal remains that investigators do not believe are related to the storms. Officials say they believe the remains had been there for quite some time and they were where, excuse me, they were went to the Davidson County Medical Examiner's Office to be examined. Well, this week is Kentucky Severe Weather Awareness Week. While we did not deal with a tornado this week, people took time to prepare for one. The, at 10.07 yesterday morning, a tornado drill took place at Hazard Middle School. Students got down and covered their heads to simulate the position they would have to take if a tornado warning was issued. While rare in eastern Kentucky, tornadoes are still entirely possible. And this is a way to make sure kids can stay safe and educated. To do the drills, we have a regular routine. We do monthly drills. So we always um, are practicing a drill for some event. So just to make sure that they, they know. 
and they don't forget where to go and what to do. Teachers say the recent tornadoes in neighboring Tennessee helped emphasize the importance of these drills. And we go to West Virginia, where suspicious remains were found in Wayne County this past weekend. West Virginia State Police tell us the discovery was made on Sunday when a homeowner found the remains on its property along Defoe Road in the Laviette area. State Police began the investigation but quickly handed it over to the FBI. Those officials have not released many details but say they have sent the remains to a lab and are awaiting those results. This is a developing story and we will update you as soon as we learn more about that case. Well, one month ago, Alyssa Noble appeared in court in Leslie County. That, uh, that appearance was supposed to lead to a bond hearing yesterday. And instead, she pleaded not guilty to a tampering with physical evidence charge as well as public intoxication. This, after deputies tell us the murder suspect was found high on drugs while she was supposed to be on house arrest. I was at the Leslie County Courthouse yesterday to learn the latest details on this case. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer and I, and I get angry and I get mad. Louise Johnson, mother of Paige Hayes, displaying her frustration about the system after a judge rescheduled the bond hearing for Alyssa Noble Wednesday. I don't understand all the rules behind all this, but, but you know, we'll be there every time. Seeing the woman accused of killing her daughter, wanting Noble to see her so she could not forget either. I'm, one of, I'm going to be a reminder that my child was killed from the same actions that she was involved in a month ago. Both of Paige Hayes' parents showed up to all of the hearings ever since they began. Louise, always ready to speak up for Paige. But this time, her father, Curtis Johnson, is breaking his silence. I think that, that they just point us along wanting everybody to forget, and it's about time she stands up for her actions. They say they want Noble to do the right thing. She knows she done wrong. She knows she killed Paige. In my opinion, she deserves the rest of her life in jail. A family hurting, knowing they will never see their daughter again, still leaning on their faith to get them through. God didn't do this. God, if it wasn't for God, we probably wouldn't be standing here today. I really believe in the long run, everything's going to work out fine. Knowing Paige is at peace gives them the strength to push for justice. And Noble's bond hearing has been rescheduled in Leslie County for next Wednesday, March 11th. Well, a Whitley County man is accused of breaking his own mother's leg. Deputies responded to a fight between James Gibson and his 77 year old mother last week. The deputies claimed they found the mother covered in wounds. She also had a broken leg. Gibson is being held in the Whitley County Detention Center and is charged with second degree assault. And a Pikeville man is accused of injecting a woman with an unknown substance and sexually assaulting her. Kentucky State Police arrested 34 year old Robert Robert Caldwell Monday morning. The victim claims Caldwell held her against her will and threatened to kill her if she left the area. Caldwell is charged with fourth degree assault, rape and sodomy. He is being held in the Pike County Detention Center. A Harlan County man is behind bars this morning facing serious charges related to an undercover child pornography investigation. Kentucky State Police took 38 year old Scotty Ward into custody Tuesday. Police are charging Ward with 20 counts of possessing or viewing matter, portraying a sexual performance by a minor and five counts of distribution. Ward is in the Harlan County Detention Center. A fire destroyed a house in downtown London last night. It started around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon on Main Street. Firefighters spent hours battling the blaze. We are told no one was at home at the time of the fire, but two firefighters were hurt while trying to contain it. You know, when, when we did a search and cleared the house, that's a big relief when you know you're not dealing with somebody trapped. And as far as our personnel that have been injured, they've been minor and we're thankful for that. At least one of the firefighters has already been released from the hospital. We are still waiting to learn the other firefighters condition. And over in Rowan County, Moorhead has its first professional firefighters. Until now, the city has always operated with a volunteer fire department, but three firefighters are now paid full time. It is due to a new city budget. The goal is to start with these three men working five days a week with the dream of being a full time staff. I think you're going to see us out in the community a whole lot more. We're going to be out there pre-planning, uh, doing a lot of public education at you know, our schools and our university. Uh, you're going to see the doors open a whole lot more. The fire chief also says response time should improve since there will now always be someone at the station.
few clouds around this morning for most of the area, but a dry start to the day and a mainly dry day. You see those clouds have kind of backed off a little bit from parts of the area, and that will be the case off and on throughout the day. Some sunshine at times, some clouds at times, just an ebb and flow. Temperatures in the 30s in Somerset and Hazard, both at 39, along with Jonesville and in uh, Wise as well. 42 in Harlan, 41 in London, and 37 in Pikeville. Your emoji cast today, clouds return, but still mild, and then tomorrow, maybe be a few snowflakes mixing in with some rain colder and then by the weekend sunshine returns and we're right back into those mild conditions there in the 50s saturday afternoon lacy thank you brandon that first emoji is how i feel about snow thank you for joining mountain news this morning more news is on the way coming up state lawmakers announced a bill aimed at keeping sports officials safer we will tell you how